Hello and welcome back to Bookish <laughs> and welcome to my review of W.G. Seabold's uh, The Immigrants. Sorry if I seem awkward. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but I usually film on a GoPro because I had that for my, I have that for my fishing channel. So this is the first time I'm filming uh, a video using my phone, uh, which I've set up on my tripod in the usual spot. But now I can see myself, which is really, <laughs> really distracting. Uh, and I see kind of what the rest of you go through. So now I have to kind of give do this review without making eye contact with myself. This is my third uh, novel by W.G. Seabald. And like all of his books, uh, I loved it. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I thought it was a uh, great, enjoyable experience, a kind of, oh, transformative, deeply personal uh, reading experience. And I, I love his books. I love his writing. And yet I'm when I get to the end of his books, I'm always asking myself, what was that book actually about? Is there some meaning? Is there some subtextual meaning? If there is, did I get that subtextual meaning? And if I find his books to be so confusing and so unclear, you know, why do I like them so much? Well, a couple of things I like about them uh, are, are Seabald's writing style. There's a, there's a kind of rhythmic cadence uh, to his writing, uh, a beauty and simplicity in his writing. He, he doesn't write simple uh, declarative sentences, but uh, one clause leads beautifully to another. His word choice, I think, is uh, usually impeccable. I just, I just find something almost, almost hypnotic uh, about uh, his writing style. Um, and there is uh, something below the surface of the story he tells, which kind of straddles the line between fiction and memoir and travel writing and nonfiction writing, uh, which, which oftentimes I think, I think comes through. So for instance, the three uh, WGC Bald novels I've read are Austerlitz, uh, which I think is about identity, uh, about the meaning of who you are and, you know, if finding out you aren't exactly who you thought you were, if that, if that makes any sense, uh, should affect you. Uh, the Rings of Saturn, which felt like they were about, uh, felt like it was about futility and fate and the inevitable destruction, uh, essentially, of everything at some point. And then The Immigrants, which I feel like is about memory. And in that sense, maybe it's a little bit more straightforward. But, but, but also beneath that surface is essentially the impact um, that the Holocaust had on the surviving Jewish population of Europe um, and how they, you know, kind of had to deal with the idea of being oftentimes, particularly in this case, with being refugees without without really having a homeland uh, anymore and having to kind of resettle and recommit themselves to a new place and find some kind of uh, comfort or solace there. And they sometimes they don't. Uh, so the immigrants is ostensibly about Seabald himself. Um, encounters with four um, Jewish refugees, Jewish immigrants uh, living in various places uh, around the world. The first and the introductory character is Dr. Henry Selwyn, who is settled with his wife uh, after uh, leaving uh, Lithuania, settled with his wife uh, in England, uh, and in, he doesn't seem to have been able to move on with his life. Uh, afterwards. He, he is more or less kind of uh, stuck. Not necessarily stuck in the past, but stuck as though he can't move forward or backwards, almost like uh, an amnesiac who doesn't know uh, the way forward, doesn't know anything about their previous life or their past life until he meets uh, Seabald, who he opens up to and talks to. Um, he's become estranged from his wife, so he's kind of even unmoored from that uh, really important relationship. The second character is Paul Berater, uh, Berater, uh, that's how I'm going to pronounce his name, uh, who was a German teacher. In fact, uh, according to the novel, he was uh, Seabold's teacher in like the fifth grade uh, in, in Germany. And Berater uh, has struggles with the fact that he feels betrayed by his country, that he feels betrayed by uh, his community, uh, and yet he goes back to try to create some kind of reconciliation and that doesn't particularly work out. The fourth character is ostensibly uh, Seabald's uncle, uh, Ambrose Adelworth, who uh, wanders Odysseus-like around the Mediterranean following uh, a man who he works for and who is 
his really good friend. Uh, and when that man dies, it's as though he once again has become rootless and wandering and he has no purpose and he then kind of ends uh, his days uh, slowly fading away. And the fourth character is Max Ferber, an artist who is uh, relocated to, uh, to England in an industrial immigrant uh, kind of town in England and he has uh, provided himself with a sense of foundation uh, by being involved in routine um, and kind of stasis uh, and staying in one place. Uh, we learn through his story, the story of his parents who got him out of Germany uh, before uh, the beginning of the actual uh, widespread killing in the Holocaust, but weren't able to uh, escape themselves. These four stories then kind of provide this kind of background of, of you know, the experience of being an immigrant under the circumstances these four men find themselves uh, in which these four men find themselves immigrants. Um, one of the things I think with uh, Seabald, you kind of have to, that kind of happens is, and in in your, if you're paying attention, you don't really have to pay attention that hard. I oftentimes feel like I'm overanalyzing, uh, paying too much attention to uh, the meaning in Seabald. And I, I sometimes think if I just relaxed, I would get it, I would get that meaning better. But there are a couple of things to keep out for, look out for. Butterflies, butterfly men, men chasing butterflies, boys chasing butterflies flies with nets, um, kind of the, uh, the idea of uh, all the characters at some point uh, ascending to a great height uh, and looking down and their impressions of that uh, and how that affects, how that affects them. Um, the importance of hotels and the descriptions of hotels and the connection between hotels and, and uh, cruise liners as kind of a transitory uh, place uh, of living. I, I think all those, all those things are, are kind of cool things to look for as you go, uh, as you go through the book. You know, Seabald himself uh, was an immigrant who moved to uh, England and made a life there as a college professor. And then he wrote these books, which, uh, you know, are part uh, document, part uh, fiction. And it's really hard to tell uh, where the line uh, between those two things uh, falls. So I know, just as because I've read two other books by Seabald, that this book is going to stay with me, that the, my reading of this book will become a part of my own memory, that these stories and Seabald's experience will work their way into my uh, subconscious, and that I, from time to time, something will remind me of a passage or a character or an event that takes place here, and it will almost be like I'm remembering my memory. Uh, which is one of the more, I think, intoxicating things for me about Seabald's work, uh, about how they kind of, it kind of warms its way into your mind uh, or into the mind of the reader. And I, I think that's pretty, pretty special. Anyway, um, there you go. That's my review of The Immigrants by W.G. Seabald. I hope it made sense. Uh, I'm not sure that it did. I hope it gives you a sense of the experience uh, of reading uh, Seabald's work, and I hope that you'll give it a try. And by the way, I think The Emigrants is a great place uh, to start uh, if you're looking to pick up a book uh, by W.G. Seabald. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. I look forward to your comments in the comments section below.